Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be going over the engine and the transmission for the Trailblazer SS. So if you haven't seen the first video, uh, you'll see how I got everything ready and went ahead and pulled the engine out of the Trailblazer. So this is part two. And you can see I've got the engine right here still hanging. And uh, so what I'm about to do is go ahead and separate the transmission and the engine. And uh, go ahead and pull the wiring off. You know, you can see how easy everything is to get to. Uh, that's what I try to tell people, you know, on the on the forums and stuff like that, about taking the engine and transmission out of the Trailblazer. Um, it is just way easier to leave the harness uh, on the engine. Uh, I know I explained in part one a little bit on how to how to get this stuff taken out, but you can see it's all pretty well included. You know, the engine and transmission and the wiring and even the fuel lines are kind of like a like a package you know and if you look at it that way it's actually pretty easy to get out you can see the the cooler lines are still in there the ac compressor um doesn't get in the way and i uh, left the fuel lines on these these fuel lines are really easy to disconnect you know so everything everything's going to be real easy to just pull off sit to the side and then when i'm ready to put it back together you know i can put everything back on and um you know if this is your first time doing this you know it might be a good idea for you to take you know a bunch of pictures i mean you could take 15 or 20 pictures you know just different angles all around the engine that way if you're not sure where a plug goes or something like that you can always come back to your pictures and you can you know see see what's going on and, and maybe you can answer your own questions that way um so yeah everything everything pretty much just comes out all in one piece and it's really not that difficult i think from start to finish even with the all-wheel drive it probably didn't tape it I don't know, maybe three and a half or four hours to to pull this thing out, and it's it's a lot more time consuming with the all-wheel drive. Um, for example, um, of course, you know I had to pull the you know the CV axles out, but like on these engine mounts on the two-wheel drive, you don't really have to take these apart. You can just take the two the two nuts that are in the bottom um, out, and you can usually just get everything out in one piece. But with the all-wheel drive. Um, you have to you have to be able to slide the engine forward enough to get this to clear the, uh, the the plate that's on the frame the engine mount plate and the same thing on the other side and so you have to pull these three bolts out and then there's a there's a bolt in the top you know that's kind of up here a little 10 millimeter you can loosen up and it's got like a slider you know that hooks in there and uh, so then you can pick the engine up just a little bit and go ahead and work that thing out and once you do that and do the one on the driver's side which is the, pretty much the exact same thing they are a little bit different but you still got your main three bolts that hold the the engine mount plate on there you got your little 10 millimeter that sticks in this this little slot right here so you can just loosen that bolt on the other side you have to take that bolt completely out but on this side you can just loosen it and uh you know before you even start you take your the nuts out of the bottom and take the two nuts out of the top of the, the actual rubber mount and then when you lift this up you can you can slide that stuff right out um then once you do that you can you can shift the engine over to the passenger side enough that basically this spot right here clears the um the plate and once you do that you can just pull it right out uh, but unless you take those engine mounts apart you're not going to get it out it, it just won't come out but um but anyway once you once you get past that which is, it's not really that bad if you do that if you if you follow the instructions it'll come right out no problem so um the only other thing i did is i bolted a um a tail shaft housing on here so i could put a plug in it to keep transmission fluid from running out of the transmission um so this is an all-wheel drive but that's a two-wheel drive tail shaft housing and of course you guys know i'm going to convert this to two-wheel drive um when i go through the transmission so but um this is one of the cleanest trailblazers i've ever seen i don't think there's a speck of rust anywhere so uh, it's super clean. Everything's really good. There's barely any oxidiza oxidization on the aluminum. There's a little bit, but it's really, you know, it's not that bad at all. So, super clean. But, um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started stripping this thing down and uh, get it all pulled apart. Maybe we can see what was making all that noise in there. And, uh, you know, then we'll know what we need and we can go from there. So, well, time lapse pull this thing apart so I hope you guys enjoy the footage
Still in the middle of tearing this engine down, but I already found one one problem. I wanted to show you guys. We had a lifter. Um, it doesn't. It didn't look like it was turned sideways. Um, but it pretty much had to be. But or at least it had turned sideways or something at some point. But the you can see the roller. Get a good angle on that. But you can see the rollers all ate up on that one side right there. And uh, there was another one that had a little bad spot in it too. One of these. It wasn't as bad as that one, but let's look at the camera right here. Can y'all see that? That load back there on the very back. That thing's pretty trashed all the way around, but it's really, really ate up right there. And then if you look on. This lube up here in the front, um, that one's pretty ate up too. And I haven't even looked at the whole cam yet, but uh, that's definitely not good. And this metal went somewhere, so anyway, I'm gonna keep tearing this thing down. I just wanted to stop and show you guys that before I continue. Oh, and also, uh, I don't know where all this stuff is coming from. That is a pretty good bit. So I don't know if the oil rings are bad or, or what's going on, but we'll, we'll get it figured out. But that, I mean, there's so much soot in here that when I pulled the, the head gasket, I mean, like pieces of it are breaking off the edge of the cylinder. loose like they broke when I went to pull the bolts out I had to unthread it still and the bolts are broken but they I don't, I don't understand what's going on I've never seen this before in my life three bolts just did the exact same thing are y'all seeing this let me try to take out another one and see if, see if the same thing happens again I don't know who put this engine together but they need to uh, retire see it's like it snapped off 
But yet it's threading out. And the bolt is jacked up. I've never seen nothing like this before, literally ever. Can't tell you how many hundreds of these engines I have rebuilt and I have never seen this. I mean, if you didn't know any better, you would think these bolts literally just snapped off. Because that's exactly what it feels like. I'm telling you, it felt like every one of the bolts snapped. But here I am, I'm threading them. This engine has been a mess from front to back. So many bolts were rounded off, messed up. Look at that. All of them are like that. These are all trash. I ain't even get. Oh, yeah, I got the front ones. Same thing, I'm guessing. I don't know how I got lucky enough that none of them are stuck in the block. Can y'all see that? Is that showing up? I have no idea. Every single one of them did the exact same thing. Never seen nothing like that. Let's see what happens on these. I mean, it felt like it just broke off. That one felt normal, finally. I'm guessing somebody over torqued these things. But I still don't understand how. I mean, it, it felt like it snapped. I'm talking about snapped off. But then I was still able to, to pull the bolt or just unscrew the bolt. That one felt good. That one felt good. So these were about half an hour. This thing has been an absolute mess. Let's see what happened. That one came out. Exact same thing. Well, that, one, that one may have actually snapped off. These front ones looked okay. That one's broken. That one's broken. And that one actually snapped off. Jeez. see i got the engine completely tore down i did have a few problems uh there was some bolts that were rounded off and a couple things but i was able to get everything apart the block's really clean when i say clean i mean like there's no damage to it or anything everything looks really good so it's going to be clean like clean clean here in a little bit but uh anyway i just wanted to show you guys the 60 block and by the way i did look the number up and this is a l77 engine so it would have actually come from a chevy caprice like a I can't remember the exact year range like 2011 to 2017 something like that um uh, whenever they made the the ppvs so um that's what this engine actually came from so it's pretty pretty much the exact same as the ls2 um so for all intents and purposes it's not really going to make a difference the only thing is is um these bosses right here for the dod feeds and um uh, i think what i'm gonna do is uh insert some dowels into these holes and just go ahead and tig weld them um that way we don't have to worry about them leaking 